Good evening, one and all. Today, our topic for tonight is life-saving football helmets. And these are our team members, Paul, Ray, Preeti, and Kim. Uh, uh, I'm going to introduce the video first. There is a growing awareness in the football team that these these hardships may cause the uh, brain injuries to the people. So, in, in in USA, every year there are 1.5 billion people who are suffering with the brain injuries. Of uh, in that 1.5 billion people, there are 250,000 head injuries only from the football team each year. The highest number of injuries are only from the football game. Uh, we have many games, but only from the football game we have the uh, many number of injuries. The, 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 the they may get trauma and they may go they may be untreated in uh, by the people when they get the hits the people may uh, um, not take care about that when they start playing the game again and again uh, head impact telemetry system is the is a system that calculate the head acceleration I mean the accelerations and uh, the components of that head uh, the head impact system are the accelerometer temperature sensor wireless transceiver non volatile memory and the battery pack the accelerometer uh, takes the hard hits the, i mean the uh, takes the sudden hits that causes to the person and uh, the wireless transceiver sends the uh, 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 data from the uh, from the helmet to the uh, co coaches who are sitting outside the play game and the temperature sensor controls the temperature. And the, in the non-volatile memory, the, me the data is saved when the person gets hard hits. It can save about 100, ti 100 times of the hard hits that can be uh, taken place for a person. Um, and the next part will be continued by. OK, I'm going to cover the history of the football helmet. Um, and originally, in 1860, there were no helmets. Basically, the players just wore bandanas on their heads. Safety obviously wasn't a big impact at the time. Um, there have been attributed to lack of wearing helmets in that time up to 18 deaths. The football games were pretty uh, rough and they just really didn't, I guess, obviously care too much about safety. In 1893, the first helmet was in invented by a blacksmith um, and Navy personnel needed the helmet to protect himself and so he went and asked this person to make the helmet for him. It ended up being made out of leather and it was actually made kind of out of a horse harness and so that's how it became the leather harness. Um, and as it progressed, it came into many fads and, and shapes. Some of them were called the beehive, the flat top, and the dog ear. And then eventually they uh, progressed into new colors and then finally later on, probably in the 1940s, they started putting logos on the helmets to recognize the teams. It was mandatory, they made it mandatory in colleges in 1939, and the NFL followed suit in 1943. And at that time, they were still wearing leather helmets. Um, and they were trying to introduce plastic to replace the leather helmets. However, the plastic was very brittle and actually was causing injuries to the players as well. But eventually, the plastic did get better. And you'll see in 1950s, the helmets um, did improve, and they did things like put better plastic, they altered the shape of the helmet so it was more aerodynamic and safer around the face, and then they invented the airfield helmets where you would actually put the helmet on your head and air fill bladder, air, bl or air bladders, and it would fit right to your, hel to your head. These helmets were called Air TM helmets, and from that point on, 1970 up to the present day, they basically made some mild changes, um, but it did for the protection of the player. They did turf guards, they put ear holes in the, in the um, thing so you could hear audible calls. They used chin straps. Uh, they integrated a new face guard where at one time it was just like the one bar, then it went to the two bar, like this where it's more sophisticated and safer to use. Um, they had visor and eye shields that you'll see some of the players have underneath their helmets to protect their vision. Um, next, I'm going to turn it over to you, Elvis. <laughs> An accelerometer is a device for measuring acceleration. Um, it's actually called a MEMS, M-E-M-S, or a micro mechanical device. It is used for censoring and measuring vibration, uh, like seismic activity, like the earthquake that we had earlier uh, last week. Um, it's also used in uh, newer technology, like the iPhone. 
It senses the, the tilt and the angle to switch from uh, portrait view to landscape when you turn it. So it's used in, in, in all sorts of devices. Um, it's used in automobile airbags. It, it senses the shock and triggers the airbag. So in all types of devices, uh, these are used and they're, they're spring loaded. And so this fits up inside the helmet and uh, it senses where the player gets hit and how hard it is, what speed he's going. There's all different types of measurements that it takes uh, so that the, the people on the sidelines can take the data back and study it. Um, the, one of the new devices that incorporates um, this technology is the Wii to sense different angles. Um, Nike has integrated them into some of their running shoes to sense how fast a runner is moving and, and uh, their speed and velocity and those types of things. And uh, some of the newer laptops are coming out with uh, technology that includes this. Uh, to help prevent against hard drive damage if the laptop is dropped it senses it and uh, shuts down the hard drive so that uh, nothing's moving whenever it hits the ground. Um, some of the current studies are in the, the NFL. They've, they've done some studies since the early 90s on uh, concussions, uh, head impacts and brain injuries. There's lots of NFL players right now that are suffering from Alzheimer's disease and they're in their 40s. And so uh, this is uh, brought on these studies. But as uh, with any um, panel that's formed internally by a, a place that makes so much money like the NFL, there's going to be controversy. So when they assign their own doctors and things of that nature, uh, the data can be skewed. So it's always better for an outside uh, company to do the research. And that's what we get with college. College has scientists, professors, researchers, that are interested in doing these types of studies and so uh, that data is more accurate because there's no influence. I mean there can be but it's less likely. Um, some of the major colleges, Virginia Tech did a study with this exact system, the HIT system back in 2002. That was kind of the first thing. Um, uh, uh, University of North Carolina did a similar study and Dartmouth did a study and the only high school in the nation that did this study was at Tolono at Unity where I work. So there was a doctor or a, a professor at the U of I named Steve Broglio that had uh, uh, you know, led a research team and they outfitted these helmets with, these, uh, with this equipment and they did a study last year. And so whenever this issue came up, I was really excited because I knew that I had access to this type of technology. So you're looking at something at the only high school in the nation uh, you know, 10 miles south of Champaign, they were doing this study. And as I was speaking with him today, he was saying that some of the, the things that he noticed were uh, inconclusive as far as what other studies had found in terms of it depended a lot more on body size. Um, uh, they had uh, kids that were taking stronger hits than what the NFL was saying was acceptable. Uh, play in and play out and not getting harmed at all. So uh, he, he wants to do more research and, uh, and get some more data before he makes some conclusions. So we're going to watch a little video on, on this HIT system. So far we've focused our, our talk around football. And football isn't the only sport that we wear a helmet for, is it? Um, some future implications of this to other sports are hockey. At Dartmouth Medical School in New Hampshire, they're doing a study with this type of system in a hockey helmet. And University College Dublin, Ireland is working with an equestrian helmet manufacturer to put this type of system in an equestrian helmet for those who ride and jump, race and jump horses. And then also at Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan, they're implementing the system into amateur boxing and youth soccer helmets. What's interesting about the last one, Wayne State University, is who's sponsoring that research. 
the National Operating Committee for Standards in Athletic Equipment, the NOCSAE, is sponsoring the um, research that's being done at Wayne State University with the boxing helmets and the soccer. And I thought that that was interesting because I think that that is implications that there's very serious notions about maybe this being some, some standard in a a helmet that is is used in sports so I thought that was very interesting also we can go back and tell and and we found in our information that sports is not the only place to use a helmet military is another soldiers are wearing helmets as part of their uniform um, 5,500 helmets were shipped earlier this month to the U.S. Army, the 4th Infantry Division. Now, the reason that they were trying this is all as, as a result of a 2007 study that found 15% of a group of soldiers returning from Iraq sustained head injuries that resulted in loss of consciousness or mental confusion. Um, what the military is trying to do is to lessen the F to make an effort by the military to reduce head injuries that have affected 150,000 troops that have been um, deployed over to Iraq and Afghanistan. What they will, what this system will do in a GI's helmet is measure and r and record impacts of gunshots and blasts and other warfare trauma to try to understand the head injuries that they sustain. There was a ripple effect in the military with this system being placed in a GI's helmet. What it did is it made the officials in the military ask, well, this system is really nice in the helmet. What else could we put in a, in a GI's helmet? So they're looking at putting biofeedback and also GPS capabilities in a GI's helmet. Now, GPS is not new to the military, but it is to adding it to the helmet, and it's all because of this type of system first being put into the military helmet. So I thought that was interesting. Another system that is a takeoff of this system that uses modified um, transceivers and sensors is called a heat system. And I don't know if anybody could use it right now. I think I could because what it does is it detects body temperature <laughs> and um, it will let personnel know if you're going to overheat. So <laughs> I don't know. I think I could use this system right now. And the last thing I want to say that the bottom line about future implications of, of the HIT system is the overall implication of the accelerometers measuring head impact is to improve the understanding of mild traumatic brain injury so new techniques for prevention, diagnosis, and treatment can be developed. And I'd like to turn it over to Preeti who's going to do the conclusion for us. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Coming to the conclusion. The whole point of this technology is to measure the severity and location of head impacts, especially those that would otherwise go unnoticed, so that the players can be, uh, can be protected in advance, can be ma made preventions. Um, and sports and physical activity has been an important part of American lifestyle. Uh, they continue to find ways to make the equipment and make the games more better and more environmentally friendly and more engaging in the devotees. Equipment and games themselves has involved and improved immeasurably. Yeah, you have any questions?